So sometimes we like to hold postures for a long time. We'll be doing a little bit of that. And on other times, we like to flow between postures in a more dynamic way. So I hope you enjoy this. It's a little bit like a dance and you'll definitely feel the prana flowing all throughout the body. Without further ado, you can join me on your mat and just relax your arms to the side, standing in a tall Dhanasan position. Feel free to close your eyes as we bring our palms together. We'll chant three omkars, inhaling deeply through the nostrils as we begin. Om. Absorbing the vibrations of the Omkara, the sound of the universe. Gently with a smile on your face, open your eyes. Let's start. So we're going to begin with Surya Namaskara B, the Ashtanga version. So we're going to get right into it. It's a little bit of a challenging flow. This is my third session with you. And by now we have learned the basics and we're going to pick up the pace just a bit. So join me at the frontmost part of the mat. Take your feet and keep them one foot apart, just hip width distance. Then you can take your arms to the sides. Now this is a slightly longer version of the Surya Namaskar, so try to stay with me. You can just bring your chin parallel to the floor, straighten your spine, tuck in the tailbone, and activate the, all the limbs, all the fingers, all the toes. Let's begin. Inhale, raising your arms up. Hasta Exhale, bend forward and come into Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, looking up halfway, bring yours back into a half forward fold with the knees still straight. As you exhale, you're going to walk or jump both your feet back to the end of the mat. Now, you can come into a plank position and try to lower your body with the strength of your arms. See if you can stay above the mat. If it's difficult, feel free to drop your knees as well. From this chaturanga, we'll push to an upward dog where the whole body is off the mat. Open up your shoulders. Exhale, raise your hips and flatten your heels back into the mat for a downward dog. Take a big exhalation. Now take your right foot, gently raise it up and walk just between both the palms. Keep your left foot flat down on the mat and raise your arms up above your head. Take the palms together for warrior one. Bend your right knee 90 degrees and keep your hips rotated all the way up to the right side. Try to sit low and strong like a peaceful warrior. Then take both your palms on either side of the foot. Step the right foot back. Once again, lower the body and come into upward dog. On optional, you can drop your knees. Exhale for downward dog. Take your left foot and step it between both the palms. Flatten the right foot. Raise your arms up or your two on the left leg. Take a deep breath as you sink a bit deeper using the strength of your quads and glutes. Lowering down the palms, step the left foot back. One last time, lower the body. Lift up to upward dog, broaden the shoulder. Exhale, lift your hips up, straighten the knees and the arms. Now let's stay here for four more counts. Taking deep breaths as you pause in this pose. If you're aware of deep yogic breath or ujjayi pranayama, this is the best way to breathe while we perform these rapid asanas. Finally, you can either jump or step back to the top of the mat, 
Come into a half forward fold with your head lifted up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, completely forward fold. Feel the stretch in your hamstrings. Now raise both your arms up and bend your knees into Utkatasana, chair pull. We're going to try to sit low, keep the tailbone rounded rather than sticking it out. Just keep it in and keep your arms up. Straighten and stand tall as we complete our first Surya Namaskar. Lovely. I know your heartbeat must be racing, maybe sweating as well. That's okay. That was the objective, to warm up the body. Take a moment to just catch your breath and we're going for another round. Feel free to close your eyes and recenter yourself. It's very important that we never lose our center. Remember that yoga is not a race, it's not a marathon, it's not a workout. Even when we do challenge ourselves, it's absolutely essential to be completely associated and rooted in our center, or else it's really not yoga and we're just mechanically putting the body in certain moves. You'll notice that it's actually impossible to do these things unless you have a deep connection with your center. So do take that moment to pause and do take that moment to anger yourself in your breath. All right. Now we'll begin at the second round at the top of the mat, starting in chair pose. Take both your arms up beside you. Tuck the tailbone, looking up to the palms. As you exhale, straighten the knees and sweep your arms down into a forward fold. Looking up halfway, inhale. As you exhale, place your palms down and step or jump back to a plank. Lower the body one inch above the mat, pushing up the chest and the shoulders for a gentle back bend, upward dog. Exhale, raise up your hips, come into a beautiful mountain, downward dog. Right foot steps between both the feet, plus your left foot in a 45 degree angle and raise your arms up for warrior one. Exhale, place the palms back down, lower the body, vinyasa as we call it, and back to downward dog. Left foot comes up and between both the palms, back foot 45 degrees, inwards, warrior one. Bring both the palms beside the foot, step your left foot back to a plank, lower the body or drop the knees and open the spine. Exhale, downward dog, push your heels down and this is our last round, so stay in here for five breaths. Breathing in and out from the nostrils. Gazing towards your knees, keep pressing the palms to open the shoulders, keep breathing, trying to push down the heels into the mat, stretch those calves and ankles, this is total body stretch like I promised. Finally, raise up the heels if you want to, walk towards the top or perhaps you'd like to take a gentle leap, look up halfway, exhale bend completely forward. And raise both your arms up to the sides, come into Utkatasana. Standing nice and tall, bring your arms back down as you complete the second round. Congratulations! Take another moment, close your eyes, recenter. Make sure you're able to breathe at all times. Lovely. Back towards the top of the mat. Let's begin our Vinyasa flow. We've completed the warm up of Surya Namaskars and we're going right ahead into the sequence. Let's start in a balancing position called Garudasana. Take your hands on your hips and raise your right leg up. With the help of your left leg, staying strong, 
You're going to cross the leg over. Just, I'm going to turn myself. You can stay where you are, just so I can show you what it looks like. Crossing the right leg up in front of the left. Bend the left knee. The last step is I'm going to squeeze my thigh tightly with the knee. See if I can rotate the ankle towards the right and tuck the foot behind the calf. That's a complete wrap of half of an eagle. Let's do the other half. Open your arms into a T. Take your left arm over the right and swing your arms around each other. Perhaps you can just hold on wherever you've found a grip, but ideally try to bring your palms completely touching in Namastha. This is our eagle position. Now ready for the challenge. Once you're stable and you've found stillness in this pose, you can go even lower by bending your knees and relying on the strength of your legs to support you. Keep the spine straight, looking right ahead of you. And gently come back up. Now we're ready to release with control. Take out your arm and leg. Back to standing position. Now we're going to bring both the arms down completely. Uttanasana. Stepping the right foot outside. Ready for a half moon pose. Take your left hand, keep it in front of the left foot. And when you're ready, if you're ready, you can raise your right hand up. If you need the support, feel free to keep it down. Otherwise, we're going to try to make our arm go straight to the sky. And keep the right foot in a straight line. Ardha Chandrasana. Intermediate pose. Keep opening that right shoulder. Any level which you have found yourself with your foot, perhaps you can keep your toe down as well. This is also fine as a modification. Perhaps you have both hands down and just the big toe supporting you. That's great. You're still strengthening this left leg. And come back down to a complete forward fold. Lovely. Now you're going to walk both your feet back into a downward dog. That's great. Take your right leg up into a three-legged dog. Cross it in front of your left leg. Place the side of the foot down on the ground and raise your left hand up for a side plank. Yes, it does take a lot of core and arm strength to hold this position. If you're finding it difficult, you can even sit down and do the same thing. And as you get stronger, raise those hips up high as possible. Bring that hand back, step that foot forward, back to downward dog. Take both your feet and step them to the top of the mat. Now we go back to Ardha Chandrasana on the other side. Taking the left leg up to the sky, balancing on the right palm in front of the toe. Slowly. Raise the left up towards the sky, and when you get your balance, start to correct the alignment by straightening your knees, raising that top arm. As I said, take all the modifications you need, perhaps the foot is semi down, perhaps both the hands. Listen to your body. Few more breaths as you hold this advanced posture. And gracefully, we will return to the ground. Step forward with your feet back to downward dog. This time, raise your left leg. Cross it in front of your right. Take the side of the foot into the ground and raise your right hand for a twisted side plank. Strong arms. You got this. One more breath. And return back to downward dog. Lovely. Let's take a moment to rest. You can relax your knees into the ground. Take both your elbows and put them in the mat. Press down the chest and chin and see if you can arch your back with the hips raised and start to feel the spine opening. 
putting pressure into the elbows to get that deep shoulder stretch. Taking deep exhalations with the head bowing down in this heart chakra activating pose. And relaxing both your palms, that's lovely. Taking your hands by your sides and sitting in Vajrasana. Let's start by straightening out one leg in front of us. Lovely. The left leg is going to go to the left side of the hip and you're going to flex this right toe. Raise your arms and then straighten them up to the sky. Exhale and try to reach the right foot. Completely bending forward, feeling the stretch in the right leg. Beautiful. Inhale, raise both your arms and relax your arms to the side. Now, as I promised, we are flowing today, not holding one pose for too much time. Let's see if you can lie down on your back. Raise this left knee as you do and raise the right leg. Pull it into the chest. That's right. Feel the hamstring stretch. In the same way, flipped over. A few deep breaths as you loosen up the legs. Lovely. Relax this right leg. Try to sit up using the support of your hands. That's great. Straighten this left leg. Bend the right leg outside the hip. Raise your arms, elongate the spine. Flex the left toe. Bend forward, gripping on the foot and keeping the spine straight as you bend forward. Raise both your arms. Bend the right knee, come down to lie down, gently on the back, raise your left leg and pull it into the chest. Deep breath, you're gonna need it. That's lovely. Relax your left leg, both the feet are down, now we're going to go into a deep back arch called Chakrasan, taking your hands beside your ears and pressing your palms into the ground. Keep the fingers facing the feet and when you're ready, start lifting up your hips. This is the modified version. The second level is coming to the crown of your head, pressing it into the mat. And the last level is the most challenging, pressing into the palms and raising up your hips completely for a deep opening of the spine. Holding this position, using the strength of your limbs to support you, keep raising up the hips and straightening the elbows. Slowly relaxing your head down and flattening your spine safely onto the mat. That's lovely. We're going to take both our feet together and come into Supta Baddha Kona Asana to relax after this big challenge we've just taken. You deserve it. Close your eyes and open your palms and just breathe deeply as you go into a deep state of relaxation momentarily. Yes, you've got a couple seconds. Indulge as much as you can so we can go back out there with full force. All right, bringing the knees together and coming onto the feet. Now we are going to raise both the legs up. The next challenging pose is Sarvam Asan, shoulder stand. You're going to take your hands and place them on your lower back. Start pushing up the hips off the mat and see if you can raise yourself all the way up into a straight line. 
Now, some of you might be halfway up, perhaps your legs are bent, a little bit slanted. That's absolutely fine. Like, as I said, it's all about gentle progression through practice. So today, don't worry about perfection, just worry about giving it your 100%. Try to squeeze the legs together and point the toes to come into a straight line. Once you're here, hold strong and high. Take a few breaths and observe the changes in your body. We are compressing the chest, neck, and the head, all the regions of our respiratory system where our hearts, our nasal chakra, our throat chakra, all of these things are being activated. And yes, we are boosting our immunity in this position. Isn't that lovely? Our endocrine system is also being activated from the gland in our throat. And slowly, when we're ready, we're going to start lowering the feet behind the head. Coming into Halasan. See if you can lower the feet towards the ground or whatever is comfortable for you. Interlock your fingers, flatten them in the mat behind your back. And try to breathe as you exhale into this position. Whatever version you might be doing, you don't need to look exactly like me. Perhaps you're still in a half shoulder stem and you can just take your time to reach this final position. And finally, roll your hips back down and relax your legs into the mat. We're still lying down in a supine position. The next pose is Matsyasan, where we'll raise our chest up and again open up the neck, press the crown of your head into the mat. If you want to challenge yourself in this fish pose, you can come into a half lotus and take your foot on the opposite left thigh. Perhaps you'd like even more of a challenge to come into a full lotus. This is definitely not compulsory. Make sure that, that the chest is as open as you can. You're feeling the heart expand and allowing the throat chakra, the Vishuddhi, to be activated. The crown chakra is pressing into the mat and we can really feel our heart open. You can straighten your legs wherever you are and relax the whole back, flat down into the mat. Now from here, we're going to raise up the right knee and the left knee and take the right foot on top of the left knee. This modified pigeon pose is gonna give a beautiful stretch to the glutes, which we're sitting on all day long. A lot of tension is built up. Take your hands under your thigh and lift the feet off to press the knees into the chest. Feel that beautiful stretch in the thighs and the glutes. As we slow down, coming into the cool down mode of this class, you're going to breathe deeply and slowly. Taking complete inhalation and complete exhalations. Notice how I keep pressing my knee into the chest. It's a gentle way to go deeper into the pose. Lowering down the feet, take your left foot on top of the right, interlock your fingers under the right thigh. Raise your legs up and press the knees into the chest. Exhale, inhale, relax. Enjoying a beautiful stretch of something we don't stretch enough. And relax those legs back to the ground. That's lovely. You're going to open up your eyes, arms nice and wide. And you're going to take your right knee outside. 
take your left foot to the other side and see if you can twist your head to the left. So I'm allowing both my knees to fall to the right side and I'm twisting my left head to the left. I've got about two feet between the knees and I can really feel the stretch in the psoas muscle above the thigh as well as the spine as it decompresses into a, into a twist. Exhale. As you detoxify the abdominal organs and release the carbon dioxide from our system. Raise your knees and drop them to the left side and turn your head to the right, palms facing down. Try to push the knee down to the, towards the ground to get an even deeper stretch in the thigh. Deep breath. Enjoying this massage-like feeling on the spine. Noticing the long length of the breath in and out. The objective to yoga is to reduce the number of breaths that we take. That increases the longevity of our life and the peace of our mind. Raise the knees. Take both your legs out and straighten them out completely. We finally reached our Shavasana. You can collapse the entire body and keep your palms facing up. Keep some space between your legs and your arms. And finally, just let go. Surrendering all the sensations you might be feeling within to the universe as you watch yourself like a third person detached and pure relaxing the whole body and slowly we will Return life back into the body and come into a field position, turning to the right side, keeping your head on the right arm, and slowly pushing yourself up into Sukhasana, crossing the legs and relaxing your arms to the sides. Now we're going to end with a bit of pranayam. So you can keep your hands in Nana Mudra, just above your knees. And you're going to keep a straight spine, shoulders open, completely available to take deep breaths. Now we can close our eyes and begin to take a yogic breath with the breath coming through the shoulders, the thoracic, intercostal muscles, and finally the belly. Exhale, and then inhale. Exhale, and inhale. Lovely. The next practice is called Brahmari Pranayama. This is going to center the energy in the brain. It will reduce headaches, migraines, any tension. It also improves people with epilepsy and other vertigo-like symptoms. So this brings about a super calming, tranquilizing effect in your brain. It's very simple. All you have to do is take a deep inhalation through the nostrils. And on the exhalation, we'll be pursing our lips and making the sound of an M. Ma. Mm. It's called Brahmari because that is the word for honeybee in Sanskrit. And you'll feel that sound just take over your mind. Let's begin. You'll take your hands with your first finger on top of the ear lobe and press the lobe completely so that you can no longer hear. In yoga, we call this Pratyahara, which is withdrawal of the senses. Now that you cannot hear, 
the voice will be even more amplified in your mind. Let's begin with a deep inhalation and elongating the M as long as you can. Thank you so much for the lovely compliments on the session. I'm so glad that you enjoyed. <laughs> I'm tired already halfway. That's the sign of a challenge. I hope you took the last few minutes to really wind down and restore yourself to a relaxed state and a balanced state. And if there's no longer any questions, then I will bid you farewell for today. Thank you so much. Once again, my name is Avni Talsanya. Feel free to follow my page if you have any more yoga tips. And I'll see you on Umami Life next week. Namaste.